Evening everyone, Cliff here and I'm in my shed. If you've never been before, you're very welcome. Um, if you have been before, you may remember this. Yeah, this was the uh, collet block I made. It was meant to be uh, an ER32. Ended up an ER25 because I balls up the thread on it. But not to worry, it's still a usable bit of kit. Now, some time ago, I made this. This is a this is an ER32, just to prove I can do an ER32 thread. But this is a, an ER32 collet chuck, which goes on to me ML7. And this is an ER40 clamping nut, and that's my next project to make an. ER40 collet chuck for the lathe. I've done a little drawing here to help me out with the explanation. <clears throat> Basically this is what we're going to be making and this is a representation of my nose of my lathe on the end of the spindle. So what we've got to do <clears throat> on this end of it I'm going to be cutting a 1.5mm pitch metric thread to fit the nut. Now in the scheme of this this uh, this make the importance of this thread is probably about a 9 out of 10 8 or 9 I mean is all that is that guides the collet which fits into this taper which we've got to cut. I mean, it's not too hard to actually figure out a taper on that, but I'll show you that when I'm doing it. So <clears throat> I've got to turn this down to the diameter for the thread for that, for the um, for the nut. And like I say, that is all that's going to do is guide the collet into this taper. This taper in in, in importance is about a 9.9 out of 10. That's that's got to be pretty good for the collets. Now down the other end, this is the uh, lathe nose. On my particular lathe on the ML7, it's an inch and an eighth by 12 TPI. And we've got to drill, bore this out and, and do this thread. And again, that's probably only about a 9 out of 10 in importance on this. The important bit is this register here on the lathe. Now that has to fit into this register here on the collet chuck and it's the same if you're doing a, a lathe back plate, a, a chuck back plate or anything. It's, it's this register that actually will put the, ch the chuck or whatever you're putting on there back in a repeatable position. Now when I made me um, my little ER32 one. I did read a couple of books and things about some of the books I've got. Now I remember Harold Hall saying that you really want about a micron, a thousandth of a millimetre clearance on this. Now I can't even measure a micron to be honest with you. I ain't got anything that accurate. The advertised diameter of this from our lathe and I suspect it's how it came out of the factory, is one and a quarter inches. 1,250 thousandths. Now my one actually measures an inch and 249 thousandths. So over the years, somehow that has lost a thousandth off it. And to be honest with you, if I made the uh, new chuck to one and a quarter inches it'd be too big it'd be pretty useless because you would just would not get the repeatability on taking it off and putting it on so this is critical so when I first made a back plate or whatever for the chuck I knocked up these two bits basically this is the size of the register on here 
and I made this piece that I mean they fit nicely together so this is the guide that I'll be using when I come to do this bit but even the I mean this fits on here a little bit I mean there's virtually no play in it but it's a little bit looser than I would have liked it um, so when I do get to this stage when I'm doing this recess for the register when I get this feeling like it wants to go in but don't quite go in that's probably when I'll start taking unscrewing the chuck turning it around and trying it on the spindle The material I'm going to use for this <coughs> is this lump here. This is a uh, FDL lump of steel. It's a bit more than I actually need, <coughs> so it gives me a bit of leeway when I come to do it. Um, started its work in life as one of these. This is a pin off of a bit of demolition equipment and I've actually cut this bit off of it. I had, they're longer than this, I've got another one over there but they are very heavy. But they are really good still, they're really hard material. I get these courtesy of my, well I get these, I've got these two courtesy of my mate who um, works in the demolition. These was obviously scrapped and had got too rusty and pitted or whatever to be usable. So fortunately I've got them, but they are very, very hard, which is what you want for this sort of fitment. I mean, ideally this would be nearly made and then hardened and then finished off and ground, I suppose, but I ain't gonna go to that trouble. This original ER32 one I made, that's just out of a bit of EN1A and that's that's been fine. That's, that works fine for me but this is very hard gear I have turned a bit of this before um, it turns all right with a bit of uh, a carbide um, but it is very hard so but that is what I want anyway I think there's enough of this waffling um, let's get to the lathe and get started on it all right well I've got the material mounted in the lathe <coughs> I'm not overly concerned about how concentric it is in the lathe at the moment um, because I'm going to be turning it down and most of the interest in turning is going to be done when this is turned around and actually mounted on the spindle but obviously I don't want it miles out so I was trying to shake the lathe out the door so it's reasonably, to, um, reasonably concentric mounted quite tight and I've brought the tower stock up just to try and keep it in place so I'm just going to turn it down a bit now and get it a bit half decent all right well that's the first bit done it's still a bit warm but as you can see with a finishing bit, a sharp bit, this comes up a lovely piece of material. Right, I'll set up now for the um, to start boring it and then we'll get the thread on there.
Well, that's bored to 1.025, which is what I've measured for the threading. So I think I'll clean all this wolf up in part two. We'll start the threading. 